This video is going to be the first in a series I'm going to be doing all about sort of emergency preparedness. What I am attempting to do is we are a family of 10. I would like for us to have a good emergency food supply, um, sort of 72 hour kits, if you will, um, go bags, things like that, where if there's a natural disaster, if there's a hurricane or something like that, and we have to load up and leave, I want to have everything prepared for that. And then also just if there's something crazy happening in the world and we're unable to get food at our local grocery, if we are don't have power, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm kind of covering a lot in this series. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about various aspects of it. I'm gonna show you guys sort of my planning binder, everything I've put together, all of the checklists I've put together, I will link down below in the description box if you guys would like to grab those and join me in this series. Last year I did a big decluttering series, which I am going to do again. This series is gonna be all about emergency preparedness for our big family. Now I am, I'm more of a middle of the road, moderate kind of person when it comes to this stuff. I'm certainly not an expert, but I'm also not um, the most like diehard emergency prepper kind of person. So I'm gonna do my best, but I just, I always leave room for like faith and trust in God that he's gonna take care of us. So I, I do not intend to go sort of far off the deep end with it. I just want it to be, I guess the best word would be practical emergency preparedness. So I'm not trying to prepare us to live in isolation for a year or anything like that. Uh, again, with the, again, keeping in mind that we do have a farm here. We have a lot of animals and things. So our, decision to ever have to leave our property would be an extreme decision for us um, not something that you know because of weather or whatever we would go into that decision lightly because we do have so many animals and things so we're going to talk about all that kind of stuff how we're preparing for sort of smaller scale emergencies and then a large scale emergency like not apocalyptic we're not going that far but um, just keeping our family as safe and comfortable as we can in the event of an emergency and then i'm also just going to be working on regular household items making sure we have a good stock of things i'm sure if you've been paying any attention to the news and things lately you've probably seen that uh, we're being told that there's going to be another shortage of food and supplies and they're even saying you know christmas presents and stuff like that like i toys and items like that i mean sometimes these things they tell us these things and then they don't end up happening and it's sort of just like this big scary boogeyman hiding behind a tree kind of a thing and it doesn't ever actually happen but i am just attempting to prepare in the event that it actually does happen. We're gonna go through all of that. The series, we're just gonna cover all of it. Today in this video, we're just doing our first uh, sort of grocery haul, if you will, where I'm gonna go to Costco and Sam's Club and stock up on some things. Now my goal in doing this stock up is two things. One, I do not want to show up and drain the shelves at the stores. I'm not looking to hoard all these things. Uh, right now, things are really well stocked at our local stores. I don't know what it's like where you're at, but at our local stores, things are pretty well stocked. So um, I'm just going to, and I have been like things like toilet paper and items like that. I've just been getting extra every time we grocery shop, which is sort of how I've done things for the last year, is just get a little bit extra every time. Uh, but with a family of 10, you know, it's just not something where, you know, we do, we consume more food than the average family. We use more toilet paper than the average family. Uh, we just had to have today our septic lines changed because despite the fact that the house was renovated before we bought it and new bathrooms were added, they never upgraded the septic to match the number of bathrooms. As soon as our family of 10 moved in and started using the toilets, uh, basically broke the lines of our septic. So we just had to spend a not happy amount of money having those lines replaced. So things are just different for a family of 10. Um, so understand that I'm not advocating for hoarding things. I'm not advocating for going and emptying the shelves of your grocery store of all of these kind of items that everyone needs. But that's why I think that being prepared is a good idea because if you do this preparation little by little over time, then you don't have to join in those crowds and mobs at the grocery store and fight over toilet paper and bread and milk and all of that kind of stuff. So this video, I'm just kind of introducing you to the series. I'm gonna share with you guys my emergency binder and kind of what's going in there. 
and then we're gonna do a little Costco and Sam's Club haul and get the shelves stocked up as much as I can today. All right, we're loading up in the vehicle. I've got a helper, another helper's coming to come with me to Costco um, and maybe Sam's Club. We're just gonna see what we can find. Um, my biggest thing is that I don't want to, I'm not trying to empty the shelves at these places. Uh, so that's part of the reason that I'm just kind of buying little bits at a time as I can um, because I'm not trying to like hoard and take all the food, but we have 10 people to feed. So I'm trying to build up a stockpile. And I think the best way to do that is by doing these stockpile runs, maybe once a month or something like that. So got my helpers so they can push carts. So I can do more than one cart and wish us luck. I feel like Costco and Sam's Club are always just a crazy place, especially right now. All right, so this is the emergency planning binder that I have created. I'm gonna release the printables as we go through the videos. So this first section of printables is just for the food storage. So I've created shopping lists, um, inventory for various places, freezers, fridge. Um, so you can put the item as well as the quantity that you have and the expiration date um, on all of those items from different parts of your home that you would want to inventory. Spices, condiments, things like that, just so you can keep track of everything that you currently have. Um, as well as tracking the things that you need. So these food storage inventory pages like this one, I've broken it down by baking goods, canned goods, and there you can put the item, the quantity that you want to have and the quantity that you still need to buy. Um, so you can kind of use these to create your shopping lists, especially if you wanna break it up and not do it all at one time. I also have the food calculator so that you can figure out how much you need um, for a family of your size for each of the products, uh, depending on you know how many months of inventory you wanna make. And then I also just included a list of some of the common things that you might include in your food inventory. So that will be linked down below in the description box if you are interested. All right, the car is very full, very full, but this is Costco and Sam's Club. Um, it is full up in the back seats too, uh, but not all of this is for storage. Some of it uh, is for us for now, but I'm gonna kind of try to sort through it, unload it onto the shelves. Um, I'll show you guys those, kind of the area we have set up. So this is our little storage area back here. As we've mentioned before, we are going to eventually wall this in and add air conditioning uh, so that we can temperature control it. But now that we're heading into the winter, it is not that hot anymore. So we're not gonna worry about that too much until uh, probably, I don't know, later this winter, very, very early spring is when we'll make sure that that's done by. But uh, for now, everything that's here is, is fine. It doesn't get that warm in here. I need to sort and organize this stuff a little bit because that does not belong here. But let me get it organized and pulled out and then I'll show you everything. So here's the shelves we got going right now. And we've also got the fridge and the freezer. So we'll just start and we'll go left to right. Obviously there is not much in this deep freezer just yet, but I did get um, two packs of beef cubes, beef cubes for like uh, beef stew and that sort of thing. Some ground turkey, chicken nuggets, chicken breasts, two whole chickens, and then a bag of the thin sliced chicken breasts. Now, I am on the hunt for a place where I can order like more in bulk, 
um, you know, maybe potentially like do a half a cow is what I've been looking at, but then also for chicken, I want to be able to store a bunch of chicken as well. I've got to clean out this fridge. Um, it came from the tack room area and it's really disgusting. I kind of don't even want to show you guys cause it's really that nasty, but um, I'm going to clean it out. So just don't freak out on me. We just got milk. There's some dog food and pepperoni, bacon. There's some carrots down there, meat, some butter. Not much in here right now, um, but uh, I'm gonna get it all cleaned out and we'll start being able to fill this up. We've gotten a bunch of food grade buckets as well, so I'm gonna start transferring things, but I just wanted to get everything out and put up for right now. And then um, between the buckets and I've got a bunch of glass jars that I got from Azure Standard. So I'm gonna use those to store everything, but I've gotta take um, stock of what I've got in the house what needs to go in and what needs to stay out and then what form of storage, you know what I mean? If it's more long-term or short-term. So we've got, let me get my little stool. Okay, so up here we've got a big bag of all-purpose flour, 25 pounds of sugar. This is white rice, a big bag of white rice. And then this is just brown sugar and powdered sugar. This is just to refill what we've got in the house and then we'll keep a larger version to pull from out here. This is some of the stuff I got from Azure Standard. Uh, my kids did not like the organic pasta, so this is going to go into more long-term storage containers. So that's more like emergency food rather than food that we will eat from regularly. Uh, but there are dry beans and stuff like that. So a lot of that's going to go into emergency food and then the flour and stuff like that has got to be stored properly just some oats and then these are just snacks this I want to have some oatmeal packs in our long-term storage uh, but then you know we also eat this regularly too so I want to eventually build up a good stock of our snacks and crackers and things that will stay for a while we've still got our baking parchment paper some vanilla extract olive oil then there's a big can of canola oil vegetable oil and that is honey right there and then these two big things of olive oil, kosher salt, giant thing of baking soda, and then strawberry spread. That'll probably just go in the house. These will go in the house. Um, obviously, K cups. Probably not going to do you much in an apocalypse. Big boxes. This is a six pack of individually packaged uh, things of elbow noodles. These were on clearance for $3. So I grabbed the last two of those. And then this is for two pound boxes of spaghetti. Then this one has elbow noodles, spaghetti, and penne, and I got two of those. And then pasta sauce, a three pack of those, and a two pack of peanut butter. Some mustard, and some sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And then beans that we use regularly, I want to keep stock of those as well. So black beans, kidney beans, rotel, tomato sauce. We use those in a number of recipes. So I wanna make sure we start building up our stock of those. And then on this side, you can see we've been collecting toilet paper and paper towels every time we do a grocery order. So like every two weeks, every three weeks, we get, uh, we've been getting a package of paper towels and toilet paper just because to be honest with 10 people, last year having toilet paper completely run out was kind of a nightmare for having 10 people. So, um, and we don't want to, again, have to like go to the store and fight crowds and panic buy. So we're just trying to build up the stock now while there's plenty on the shelves so that uh, we're not stopping other people from getting what they need, but we're keeping a good stock for a family of our size. So we've got uh, paper towels, lots of toilet paper, and then um, I was surprised at what a good deal this was. I hadn't really looked at like laundry detergent and stuff at Costco in a long time, but this was a, a good deal for their little laundry packs. And then I like these little unstoppable things. Some bottled water, we're gonna build up that stock as well. Um, some more paper towels. And then down here's my canning stuff. And then these are my different size jars um, from Azure Standard. There's some more over here, as well as some more up there. And then I got some cup of noodles. Those are good storage food. You only need to add hot water to them and they last a long time. Got my dehydrator down there that I need to bust out and use. Um, start to build up our supply, our emergency supply of certain things like batteries um, and then these little like lantern flashlights and stuff. We do have some of this stuff, but I want to have a designated spot and stock of those things. So 
I know it, I mean, it doesn't actually seem like much now that I <laughs> pulled it all out and set it out, but it's a good start and um, get some things checked off the, the list and keep building from here. All right, guys, so that's it for this first video in our practical emergency preparedness series. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to check down below in the description box if you want to get any of the printables or checklists that I'm using. My goat is climbing on the bicycles, but that is it for this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you're looking forward to the rest of the series, and uh, I'll see you guys again very soon.